What's up guys, I'm Jeff, the founder of Worldwide Cyclery, and today I'm gonna to give you my subjective and objective review of these TRP Quadium Quadiums QADM brakes. So we did a uh, sort of overview on these brakes almost a year ago. They've been out for uh, just over a year now, I think, and they've become increasingly popular over the last year, and we've sold more and more of them. We've had more and more people at our shop and our local customers to put these on their bike and test them out, and pretty much, I don't think I've heard a single bad thing about these brakes. Uh, what's unique about them, so TRP as a brand you may have not have heard of before, or maybe you have at this point, but Tektro has been around forever. Uh, Tektro makes all sorts of brakes and who knows what else, but TRP is kind of like the high performance arm of Tektro. And, uh, that's kind of where these came from. So TRP started working with Aaron Gwynn, which is like the, the, the famed World Cup downhill racer back in 2016. He helped them sort of develop these brakes and refine them. And the Quadiums are the, I guess they're supposed to be downhill bike brakes. It's a four piston brake caliper. Um, perfect for a downhill bike, but also totally usable on a trail or enduro bike as well. And that's what we've been putting them on mostly. This is a transition smuggler that's got a pair of the quadiums on them right there. Um, these are sold without rotors like all brakes these days. You kind of buy the brakes alone and then you do the, uh, the adapters and the rotors separately. TRP does also make some really cool brake rotors that you can get for these that have uh, really good ventilation and slots and seem to work really well. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've taken away from these brakes, uh, they do use mineral oil, which is really nice. It's kind of convenient to bleed them just like Shimano brakes. Mineral oil is just more convenient, earth friendly, easy thing to, to bleed your brakes with. And if you spill any on your hands or in your hair or in your eyes. Doesn't hurt as bad as dot fluid. Um, one of my favorite things about them is kind of the modulation. So SRAM brakes. I would say SRAM are kind of more on that like spongy modulation side where Shimano is like a little bit more tight and snappy. We actually made a video about sort of the differences between SRAM and Shimano brakes a while back. Um, so check that out if you haven't seen that already. But I really feel like TRP kind of falls in the middle. So they, they're powerful. They're not as snappy and tight as Shimano. They're not quite as spongy or modulation feel as SRAM. They're sort of somewhere right in the middle. And part of that is uh, has to do with that big long lever blade that's on these things. So you do have a tool free reach adjust, you have a big long lever blade, um, that kind of gives that brake a really good amount of modulation and just that four piston caliper, it's powerful. I would say it's maybe not quite as powerful as some of the new um, guide RSC codes um, or, the, uh, or like Shimano Saints or Shimano Zs. Maybe not quite as powerful as those, but super, super close and definitely more powerful than the uh, sort of competing two piston calipers out there from SRAM or Shimano. Um, but the modulation kind of takes the cake for TRP. And the other thing is consistency. So on a long downhill, um, they really don't seem to have any issues with uh, getting hot or fading or, you know, pulling to the bar or any of that sort of stuff. They seem to be extremely reliable and bulletproof in that sense and like pretty maintenance free as far as like how often you need to bleed them or how likely it is that they're going to get air in the system or sort of just have an issue in general. So consistency and modulation are sort of my two takeaways from riding these brakes and um, just sort of experiencing that. I love it. Um, some of the things I don't like about it, I personally am not a huge fan of the looks. I think they, they kind of look nice, but I don't really like that huge long lever blade. Um, that's just totally subjective right there. Um, the other thing I don't like, they don't have a sort of contact point adjustment as SRAM calls it, but it's like how far that lever pulls. So if you want them to like pull exactly the same, you don't really have anything to adjust that other than your reach adjust, which technically isn't what that adjusts. Um, I really like that SRAM has that contact point adjustment because I kind of have a personal preference of like really making sure that the brakes pull the same amount of distance. And it's super easy to do that on a SRAM brake, whereas a, a TRP brake, you don't have that. So you kind of have to spend a little bit more time when you're doing your initial setup and bleeding them perfectly. So you can kind of uh, over bleed them or under bleed them a little bit. Again, it gets challenging to do that. You really definitely need to know what you're doing in terms of bleeding your brakes to get it to feel perfect like that. But sometimes it's hard when you don't have that adjustment to get your brakes, the front and the rear, to sort of have that similar uh, distance and lever throw. Um, so that's one thing, kind of a downside to them that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, 
Other than that, it's really cool to see sort of another competitor come up. At least in the U.S., kind of the two big giants in the brake world are SRAM and Shimano. Uh, we don't really see that many other brands of brakes on bikes out here. Uh, sure, you have Hope. They, they make killer brakes, but they're super rare and kind of hard to get parts for. Uh, Magura seems to be making a little bit of a comeback. Uh, Formula a little bit. You know, you see those here and there. But again, you pretty much almost never see anything out here other than SRAM or Shimano. Uh, but nowadays, TRP is like really starting to show up more and more here and I see them more often, uh, especially the quadiums. I'm actually running a pair of slates on my gravel bike. It's more or less a rigid mountain bike. It's a gravel bike with flat bars. So the slates are like the uh, other TRP mountain bike brake set. Oh, another downside, it's harder to find sort of that like matchmaker thing, right? So if you have a SRAM drivetrain uh, and you have SRAM brakes, Super simple, Matchmaker sort of just links it together. Uh, same thing with Shimano, if you're using iSpec Shimano brakes and Shimano shifter, it's really easy to just connect that up. Um, obviously TRP doesn't make shifters, so whatever uh, shifter you're using, you might have a little bit more trouble finding uh, the little piece that you need to connect the TRP brake to the shifter. You don't necessarily need that, just kind of looks cleaner as far as the cockpit setup goes. Um, this bike right here doesn't have it and it looks and works just fine, just kind of again like you have two bands on there, the brake band and then the shifter band. Um, so that's sort of a little rundown on the brakes and how they feel. To get into some of the specs on these things, let's dive into that. So these things weigh in at 323 grams per brake. So that's the front brake weight. Rear might be a little bit heavier just because the line is a little bit longer. Uh, they are compatible with uh, matchmakers, but it is a little bit harder to find them as I mentioned before. But it does work for iSpec B, iSpec 2, XT and XTR only. And then of course for SRAM shifters as well. But that product is made by TRP specifically uh, as of right now. The levers are ergonomically dimpled and drilled, and they are designed by Aaron Gwynn. That's my favorite part. The calipers are CNC'd, and they have sort of a cooling fin aspect to them as well. I don't know how much that works or not. Uh, they do have a split hinged handlebar clamp, which is super convenient for when you're taking these things on and off your bike. I wish more brakes had that. Price-wise, these things come in at a buck fifty per brake, and then they also make a G-Spec version, which is sort of the more fancy Aaron Gwynn spec quadium that has a little bit different uh, material to it and a couple small other features as well. Those go for about a couple hundred bucks a piece. And again, that's just the brake, not including rotor. Those rotors that are uh, ideal for these brakes range anywhere from forty-three bucks to fifty-nine bucks. So let us know in the comments if you guys are using these brakes or if you have a buddy who's using them. Share this video with a friend of yours who needs brakes and who crashes all the time because he doesn't use his brakes often enough. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, go to Miss Fields and buy some cookies because I'm trying to get them to sponsor our YouTube channel because I'm a huge fan of chocolate chip cookies. Uh, I'm going to drink some whiskey. See you guys in the next one.